Now at this point, what I wanted to do was the classic uh, sink or swim. I wanted to toss you into the pool and see if you could swim. So I didn't say anything about how I, I would recommend to fill these things in, and that's fine. Uh, you might have started to fill in these different items, but now I'm going to give you some advice on what I would recommend. Because remember, not only do I do this, uh, not only do I teach this stuff, but I also do this for real clients. Uh, so if I was editing the story, for example, it says tagline, 10 words that describe your page best. Unfortunately, they make it seem like literally 10 keywords. No, this is more of a, of a real slogan or a tagline, one sentence. I would wish it said one sentence that describes your page best. You don't want to just mechanically write keywords. If you take my SEO class, Search Engine Optimization, we talk in there that the search engines say uh, optimize your page for people, not for search engines, not for the robots, for people. So everything that we would write in a tagline or introduction or about us page is in the service for people to find you, people to learn about you, and people to care about you and buy your product. So in these 10 words, I've got this fictional company, Victor's Bakery. If I've got a company name like PMD Interactive, that you can't tell what it's about just by its name, definitely use the tagline to explain to people in one sentence what you're about. So if people say PMD Interactive, what do they do? Video games? Movies? I don't know. We would definitely use that line to explain. Web designers and social media marketers. I've got for this particular <coughs> fictional business, Victor's Bakery. It's pretty obvious then that my company is a bakery. But I'm still going to use this sentence here to write family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake. So that slogan, that tagline there, tells people they already know that I'm a bakery because of my name. But here I'm giving more information. Family-owned. There I'm tapping into the audience that cares about small businesses, the mom-and-pop shops, the Main Street shops, not the corporations. Um, I'm showing here family-owned. I'm a bakery. In the heart of Eastlake, I'm putting a location. We are found in Eastlake, California. Maybe my region is all of San Diego, all of the U.S., whatever. But I'm trying to be as specific as possible to my potential target audience. In my SEO class, we spend time in there talking about target audience, company profile, marketing strategy. That's why I teach a variety of classes, because I cannot cram all this information in one class. So I do recommend you take the SEO class at a later date to understand more of this in terms of marketing. The reason some companies are so profitable and famous and well-known is because they have a huge marketing department spend, spending millions of dollars to craft the perfect message. Love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most profitable companies in the history of humanity. You might never ever want to touch an iPhone. You love your Samsung or whatever. But you have to admit, Apple is very profitable. Samsung is very profitable too. Microsoft, McDonald's, all of these companies are very well known and profitable because in large part to their marketing. So that's obviously a lot to put on your shoulders at the moment. But what I'm saying is always think of your message as in how am I explaining to people, how am I convincing people to do something to buy my product, follow my link, click this photo, enter my contest, subscribe to my newsletter. So this is enough to explain what my business is about. I've got an introduction where I can write even more. You don't have to spend a lot of time crafting this really, because most people are not going to look at this for very long. They're going to look at your actual posts. So I'm not going to write two paragraphs here. Three sentences is good. It says, put a little bit about your page here, so people know they found the correct Victor's Bakery. Here I can write a little bit more, again, based on my marketing strategy, which I would learn about in the SEO class. But in short, I can think about the who, why, what, when, where, and how, those classic questions. Who are we? Why are we in business? What do we sell? Let me write it down here. Who are you? What do you sell? When were you founded? 
why are you in business? But more complexly, why would someone care? Why would someone follow you? Why would someone buy your product? That's a harder question to answer. Who, why, what, where? Where are you located? You might not have a physical location. That's fine. You might not need to put that part in. You might not need to f fill in most of these questions. Uh, fill in what applies to you. And finally, how are you unique? There's plenty of other bakeries out there. There's plenty of other dog walkers out there. There's plenty of other realtors out there and importers, exporters. What, uh, how are you unique? <clears throat> this again is the larger concept of marketing. This requires a deeper understanding of your own company. In the real world, when my company um, is hired by a client, we spend a time to figure all of this out. We talk to the interested parties the owner or the co-owners or whatever, we answer this and a variety of other questions so that we understand about their company so that we can do social media on their behalf. And also for them to be more successful because then they have this why answered, which might be the hardest one. If you'd like to, you can do a little bit of you've got bold and italics and links and bullet points. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Again, this is just two to three sentences to answer some of this. People will look at it briefly and move on. They will be following more your, your picture posts, your link posts, your text posts, your video posts. So you don't have to spend a lot of time crafting this. We have then the option to set that public, or we have other options which will make more sense as time goes on but we've got public. Let everyone that comes upon my page read this. Or I can lock it down only to you. Makes no sense why you would do that. We want everyone to see this that is potentially going to follow you on Google+. We have something called extended circles and your circles. That'll make more sense once we talk about circles a little later. But basically you will be able to target just about every message you put on Google+, to specific people. Whereas on Twitter, if you tweet something, everyone could see it, which might sound good, but then that means you're spreading your message too far, perhaps. On Google+, we can say, let's say I've got a, I've got a, a pet shop, and I've got some people that are dog people, some people that are cat people, some people that are bird people. If I post sale, cat food, this Sunday, why would the dog people care? Why would the bird people care? I can target it to circles. The cat people circle will see this post only and not bother the dog people. Again, circles will make more sense as we go on, but if we only wanted certain people to see this intro, we could target them. Doesn't make sense for us, so we'll leave it on public. Custom is more complex. Don't worry just yet. So public, let everyone see that. I'm going to save that. Any questions on what I mentioned on this part of the story? Just, I didn't see where you click to get the circles. Well, you've got this little button that says public. That's okay. where you can select your circles. I've got my story filled in. Contact info. Again, public your circles only. This is sort of to set privacy and such. For a personal account, it would make sense that I only share some of my contact information with some important people. But for a business, you probably want it as public as possible. You want people to easily email you or send you a fax or whatever. So here it asks for a phone or a mobile or whatever. So let's say I'm going to put in a phone number. I can have more than one phone number. I can have a mobile. I can have an email. Again, this is all information related to your business, not your personal. That's why we have a business page. What might else be useful? Address.
It's actually pronounced Fake. Fake Street. Any information you want to put there. Um, if you yourself, let's say you're an author and you're trying to get, you know, a, on social media to sell your books, you have to decide are you going to put your personal phone number? Are you going to put in your personal email? Well, you might not want to do that because this will be public, because we've set it to public. We could set this information to say your circles. Your circles is useful because if you've made a connection with, a, with another user, if you've connected on Google+, then they will be able to see your profile, not just any random public person. That obviously then cuts out a lot of potential people from seeing your contact information. Again, you have to decide, depending on your business, which will work best for you. My recommendation is public, and to of course fill in here business information, your business phone number, your business email, your business address. You don't have a, a, a business address? They sell P.O. boxes. You're, you have your own personal victor at gmail? You can create victorsbakery at gmail.com for free. Even better is sales at victorsbakery.com. That one is not free. If you want your own vanity email address, you have to pay for that. The Yahoo one is free, but it's Victor at Yahoo. The Gmail is free, but it's Victor at Gmail. The Cox one that you get from your internet provider, that's Victor at Cox.net. That's free with your service. But that's much more professional. For a real company, you're going to want something like sales at your company, info at your company, customer support at your company, something legitimate. But to get at your company, you have to buy that. Yes. Buy it from whom? You have to buy it from any number of service providers. One of the big ones is GoDaddy.com. Mm -hmm. GoDaddy.com is one of them. I'll mention a few more. GoDaddy is where you would go to buy your .com, so you can buy. So then you can set up an email where you would have your website. GoDaddy is one of them. Another big one is Bluehost. Each of them are going to be competing for your business, so your prices are going to be very competitive. Three that my company has dealt with are GoDaddy, Bluehost, and HostMonster. There's a million others. If you ask me, what about this, what about that? I don't know. I have to look it up. I don't have experience in all of them. But three that my company has dealt with and have good results. HostMonster.com, Bluehost.com, and GoDaddy.com. Once you set up an account there and pay for it, look up the prices yourself, they range all the time, then you'll be able to do sales at victorsbakery.com. So, yes? Uh, you said, did you say that that was free? The email is free, right? If you get a Gmail account or a Yahoo account or one of those, but if you want sales at your company, that's not free. Well, yes, uh, go ahead, continuing. You would be paying GoDaddy oh, or I Bluehost see. or HostMonster. So yes. The prices always change, so you can look them up yourself. They've always got good deals. How yes. long do you believe generally last? You can buy this service from any of these companies from as little as one year to ten years. So you can lock down that name for ten years so that no one else takes it. Or if it's a little pricey at the moment and you've got a budget, you could buy it for one year and then re renew renew when you when it's time to renew. We already have it. I just wanted to know if I can lose it because I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> I would log in as soon as I can and figure out when it expires because you don't know how long the 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 default is oftentimes one year or two years.
And then lastly, this is a little more complex. If you really need this, we need to talk during the break. But for the phone number, you can get a free phone number. If you yourself look into voice.google.com, you can get what is known as a Google Voice number. Voice.google.com. You can get a free phone number there. One free phone number. It is linked to an existing phone number. So, again, I'm not going to go too much into detail on this. You can look it up on your own, but you can create a free phone number that is linked to your existing number. So, you're giving, you're giving out this Google number everywhere. People call that Google number, and it's sort of like a middleman between the outside world and your number. People can call and leave you a voicemail. People can call your Google Voice and talk to you directly. It's pretty cool. You can set up Google Voice so that it automatically rings your cell phone and your home phone and the business phone. So wherever you're at, someone calls that Google Voice number and you'll be able to answer it wherever. It takes a little bit of setup. I'm not going to go into it. You look into it yourself, voice.google.com, and then you'll be able to put in a phone number here that's not your home phone. Actually, really cool too. If you want your business to appear that you're in a different state or a different area, I need to do that, and I actually found it really easy, surprisingly. Hmm. I've been very happy with it. All right, great. So if anyone needs to know how to do that, you're a volunteer, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you during the the break if you need it. But anyway, contact information here. You fill this in as best as you can, in all points for your business. Any, qu any other questions on the contact info screen? Uh, only that my screen doesn't show all the options that yours does. Those will appear as soon as you start adding them. So as soon as I add a phone number, it'll pop up. Do you want another item? We'll look at links. This one's pretty self-explanatory also. Here's where you add your address of your website, and you can add a custom link. So let's say I've also got a Facebook. Add another one. Let's say I've also got a Twitter. Let's say I also have um, a special, uh, a special uh, Google Plus um, specific or a, or a special offer for Google Plus users. I could do that. You don't have to literally put a profile. For example, I'm saying um, I could do something like Google Plus exclusive offers, and then that address would be an address on my website, Victor.com/slash. Google exclusives. This obviously means that I've got my own website, victor.com. It obviously means that I created a page on my website. It needs that sort of setup. This won't work automatically. That's out of our scope again. You need a website. You create a page. It's, this, would be, this is what would be known as a landing page. If you've heard of that term before, a landing page is just a website a page on your website that we're directing people to for some purpose. And it's a page that usually is not found through the main menu. Your main menu might have home, about, contact, shop, but the only way to get to Google exclusives is through your Google profile. So it's a landing page. You're directing people specifically to it. You see that all the time, perhaps subconsciously, when you get emails. You get emails from Macy's or Fry's or whatever, if you follow that link, that's, a, that's going to a landing page that is specific to you, that was generated for your coupon, for your exclusives. You don't get to it through the normal, through the normal um, homepage. And now if someone visits my Google Plus profile, they're going to follow me, but first most people are going to look at your page and say, why would I follow them? Oh, I read their story, now I get them, they've got contact information, exclusive offers, I'm going to follow them. 
obviously that's a simplification, but the more of the profile that you set up, I haven't even touched putting in a picture here. You want to put your company pictures there as soon as you can to appear legitimate and to entice people to follow you. All right, so any questions on this before we move on? Yes. Um, have you talked about how we create the vanity? The, um... Oh. You, are, you will not be able to create the vanity address up here yet until you fill out your profile, until you use your profile a little bit, because Google Plus doesn't want anyone to create that name in a spam format, right? They don't want to give anyone <coughs> the ability to take your legitimate name. So you won't be able to create that vanity address yet until you actually use your Google Plus and make it legitimate. Eventually, when you come back to this screen, under link here, it'll say claim your address. And you won't see it yet until we actually use the profile a bit. Yes? How you do the links? Well, you click on edit, and then you click add custom link, and then I put in whatever text I wanted there, and then the specific address. No, we're already on Google+. Yeah, these links are, are then go to my other social media, yeah. We will. We'll create a Facebook and a Twitter. It doesn't make sense to fill this in yet if we don't have that yet, and we'll, we'll do that on the next classes. But at this point, I'm going to move on. Uh, I didn't do anything with people or communities. They don't make sense yet. Here's what I want to do now uh, to navigate a little bit. Right now at the top left it says Google Plus page. If you hover your menu over that, if you hover over the menu, that's going to change depending on which screen you're in. So if I, it's not called the business menu because right now it's called Google page. This changes depending where you go. If you click on photos, the menu changes to photos. If you go to something called collections, it changes to collections. So I'm just going to call this the Google menu, the Google Plus menu. Hover over the Google Plus menu and go to Stream. Now it says Stream. The Stream is like your Facebook timeline, your Facebook wall. What do people post on Facebook there? Pictures and text and videos. This is where you see that as well. If, you, if your Google Plus page is connected to your customers' Google Plus pages, you will see their posts here you will see what you've posted here. If your Google Plus page follows another Google Plus page, you will see their content there. So the stream is where you see the content. Mine is totally empty because I have no connections. I have no followers, and my page is not following any pages. For me, it's recommending, why don't you follow these 57 people here so that your or profiles so that your page is not empty. Well, I'm not interested in games, so no thank you. So if you see something as a suggestion there, you, you could follow that and you'll get content. I'll explain about following in a little bit. We're still setting our foundation. So go back to the stream here if you're not there, and here's what we can do. You can share text, photos, links, videos, events, and polls. For our very first post, we will add a text post. So if you click on text, if I had my icon set up, it would show my icon, and this little bubble here is showing we're sharing text. But notice I can still attach a photo or attach a link. So I'll explain everything about this screen in just a moment. But let's say our very first post. We're excited to be on Google+. Plus. Follow us for exclusive content and coupons. Again, think about when you post something, why would, why would someone else care? Social media, of course, has the reputation, or let me say, social media has two 
legitimate aspects. There's the frivolous personal aspect and there's the serious business aspect. So the business and the personal. You can use any social network for business or personal. The frivolous, the personal stuff is you sharing that cat picture or maybe a recipe to your friends and that's of course legitimate. The business is posting stuff that your customers would care about or that your potential customers would care about. So simply, you know, posting something like, went to the store today. Well, maybe your friends and family care about that, but your customers won't. So when we post anything, think about it in terms of why would a customer care, why would a potential customer care? So I could have easily said, hello world, hello Google+, Plus, we're here. Who cares? Adding, follow us for exclusive content and coupons, now someone might care what's in it for them to follow you because it takes a lot of effort for someone to move their mouse and click that follow button. And so if we make it enticing for people to follow you in everything that we do, um, we can potentially get more followers. This of course is an art and a science and as I talk about it in this class and all, and all the subsequent classes we're always going to be thinking like that. What can I post to entice people to follow me, to react to me, to interact. I know it's misspelled, don't worry about it yet. Um, we've got then, who are we targeting this to? The default says public. I'm targeting it to everyone on Google+, therefore I'm targeting it to no one, because I don't have any followers. If you hover your mouse over that, it tells you, this may be visible to anyone, anywhere. So anyone that's on Google+, Plus might run into this. Anyone that searches on Google+, Plus might find this. Anyone that searches on a regular Google search might find this. It's public. I'm going to show you this. You don't have to do this yet, but if I click that the X to remove it, and then I click, I have the option, okay, I have public, I also have your circles. Your circles means everyone in your circles except the ones you're just following. This is, again is one of the things that's a little confusing to beginners, but will make it make sense. Google Plus, like Twitter, is a one-to-many platform, whereas Facebook is more of a one-to-one -one platform. You use Facebook someone sends you a friend request. Let's connect. You click accept. So you two have that one connection. That person cannot see your stuff until you approve it. One-to-one -one connection for personal accounts. <coughs> on Twitter and on Google+, I can post stuff and people will see it and people might follow me but I don't need to follow them back. So it's a one-to-many. I might be following 10 accounts but then a hundred are following me. I don't have to follow those other 90. <laughs> so that's the concept of circles, which we'll get into more detail. But here I'm saying only let my connections see what I'm posting here. Only let those that I've circled, only those that I've connected with, see it. The cool thing about then using circles in Google Plus again is that I can put all the cat people in a circle all the dog people in another circle, all the bird people in another circle. And yes, I can put John in both the cat circle and the dog circle. And so when I select your circles, I'm only sharing my stuff to those that I've connected <coughs> with, not to the public. There's a special circle called just following. You might want to do that, like let's say you're following accounts that are um, informational, <laughs> Um, you know, thought leaders in your space, they wouldn't really be um, following you back or interacting with you. It's like if I'm trying to get the, the president's attention, I probably will not get his attention. So the following is a special circle. It says, share this with everyone in your circles except the ones in your following circle. It's a special circle. If that doesn't quite make sense, it will as we go on. But this is almost like keeping it private, only to your connections. 
you could select your circles and public. So now what happens is anyone can see it in the public, but then your circles, the people you've connected with, get a notification. Victor's Bakery has shared something with you. So they will get an alert. They will get a notification. Something new from Victor's Bakery. So you can mix the two. If I put it public, no one gets an alert unless they search for it and find it themselves. But if I use circles, I can alert people. I can alert my, I, I can alert my potential clients or current clients. Cancel those two. And then we've got extended circles. Everyone in your circles plus all the people in their circles. This is the friends of friends. So if I'm connected to 10 people, if I've circled 10 accounts, 10 customers, and each of them has 10, and I select this, I'm going to send this, I'm going to alert my 10 connections, and then the, their 10 connections. So then I've reached 100 people, even though I've only got 10 directly connected. So that one's very useful. Send this to the friends of friends. There is the ability for people to turn that option off. That friend could go to their settings and turn off. Don't show me extended content. It's not on by default, so you're still going to reach a large audience. No one knows perhaps to turn that off, so you're still going to reach all those people. And then below here are some of the built-in circles we can create more later. So we've got following, customers, VIPs, team members. So if I say only let the team members see this, now it's not public. Only the team members will see this. And at the moment there are zero in that circle, so no one sees this. I can say let the team members and the customers see this. Again, it's not public, only those two circles will see it. If I had dog people circle, cat people circle, I could target them. And notice also it says add names, circles, or email addresses. So if you know someone else on Google+, you can start typing their name. And they might show up there. So now what I'm doing is I'm sharing something, but it's only targeted to one person throughout all of Google+. It's almost like a private message. And notice, I can also put in, in email addresses. If they, are, if they have their email address part of their Google Plus profile, it'll send this post to them on Google+. If they don't have a Google+, Plus, this will send an email to them. But unfortunately, this is not like an email distribution list, because you have to then manually add in every email address here. You cannot import a list of 500 email addresses. <coughs> it's not designed for that. And anyway, if I do send this to those two email addresses, they'll get an email that says, Victor's Bakery shared this with you. Click here to view it it's going to take them back to Google Plus anyway. And if they wanted to reply or favorite or whatever, they have to create an account. So this is not that useful, sending an email to people. Yes? Have you found that there's one strategy that's more effective when you're starting out trying to build Google Yes. I like to select public and extended circles. Anyone then can run into that can run into this with search will find this. And this assumes, however, I've already got some connections. I don't have any connections, any circles, so then that's going nowhere. But let's say I've got seven connections. So that seven is going to multiply because those people probably have a hundred connections. So that's one of the more effective ones. Public and extended circles. It's going to spread out as 
as much as it can. As you get more connections and followers, you'll spread out even further. You can add as many as you want here. Maybe also send it to the VIPs. So there's a lot of nuance here than just posting something. Just to make sure I haven't totally lost track of what you're going with, this seems to be a, something you do for an individual post. Mm -hmm. okay. This one post this introduction post it's being set, sent it's being set to this one post it will remember this in the future so you don't have to set it every time but then you can edit it anytime you want when you make a new post yes if we've set up our customers in the um, outlook can we download the outlook to go no. And are you saying take that Outlook mailing list and plug it in here? No, it's not built for that. Do we have your individually build in our customers one at a time who they are? Yeah, it's not made like that, like an email distribution list. And also, if you have those customers in Outlook, do they have a Google Plus page? If they don't, most likely they're not going to go out of their way to create an account. They're already on Facebook and happy with Facebook. You know, people are happy on Twitter, they're not going to go to Facebook. People are happy at Google Plus, they're not going to go to Facebook, etc. So it's not going to be as effective to try to bring in existing customers, especially if they're not already on Google Plus. We'll talk about uh, tapping into an untapped uh, market share. So at this point, let's click share that posts it. Let's click share. And it says, nice post. Here are a few quick tips. Did you find a typo? Use the drop-down menu on your post to edit or delete it. Don't want people to leave comments or reshare it? You can turn that off here too. Got it. What this is saying is anything that you post, when you put your mouse on top of the post, right there, you'll get the little triangle. I would like it that it's always visible, but um, if you hover over what you just posted, you get the triangle, and that gives you the option. Whoops, I made a mistake. Let me go back and edit it. Actually, I shouldn't have posted that. That that was private information that wasn't supposed to be public yet. I can delete it. I can get the link to this post. That's a link right there to that post, and what you can do there is share that on your email or on Twitter or whatever. Don't worry about embedded posts, but that's if you've already got a website, you can copy this post to your website. It's more complex. Don't worry about mute post yet. Disable comments, disable reshares. Facebook and Google Plus share something that Twitter doesn't. Twitter is a very open network for good or for bad. The good is that people can post anything they want on Twitter. The bad is people can post anything they want on Twitter. What I mean by that is that there's many examples of Twitter fails. That people try to create some sort of community um, event or uh, contest or project or goodwill. They try to do something. A well-meaning company tries to put something on Twitter to create a lot of activity and fun it can very easily be hijacked in a negative way. An example that happened uh, a year or so ago was the New York Police Department, is on Twitter of course, they wanted to do community outreach. So they posted on their Twitter, hey everyone, um, take a photo of, uh, of your local police officers and hashtag it MyNYPD. Obviously NYPD wanted... <laughs> They wanted amazing photos of people with their police officer hugging them and all of that. That didn't happen. Photos of police brutality, police overreach, and all of that flooded their well-meaning hashtag. They wanted to do community outreach. That's a good thing. But then there's been many examples of police overreach and all of that. So their message was muddled. And there's nothing that the police department could do about it. No one can control what people post on Twitter. 
for good or for bad. The good of that, obviously, as we saw in countries throughout the world, remember the Arab Spring, countries, uh, people, uh, people had revolutions in their countries in the Middle East. They, they kicked out their totalitarian governments through social media. When the government shut, when their government shut down the newspapers, the radio, all of those state-controlled media, they couldn't shut down Twitter, they couldn't shut down Facebook, they couldn't shut down Instagram. People were able to commu communicate with each other on Instagram, have a rally, and there were nations that were transformed literally through social media. It's not hyperbole, it, it happened. It's happening. So that's the good and the bad of such an open network like Twitter. Now, Facebook and Google Plus, though, let you control your message a little bit more. You can post what you want on your Facebook or Google Plus and invite people. Share that selfie with that police officer. And then when someone posts something that you don't like, delete their comment. You have that ability because it's your property. Just like you can't, just like you, you can tell someone that's on your front porch that's yelling at you, get off my lawn, it's my property, go to the sidewalk in public. You can do the same thing here. This is my porch. If people are saying negative things, spam things, if I'm talking about cats and suddenly dog people have taken over, I can delete that. It's my property. Ignore the calls of my free speech, because that free speech obviously ha applies to government entities, federal government, local government, but to private property, we know that it's our private property. So you can disable comments. If you're going to post something, and for whatever reason it's going to be controversial, you can disable comments. You won't have people muddying your message. Maybe you didn't expect that people would come and start to harass, disable comments, or block those people. So you can control your message a lot better on Google Plus and Facebook than on Twitter. You have the ability to delete people's comments. You have the ability to turn off comments, turn off reshares. And that's totally up to you. That's fine. And there's no positive or negative of doing it. It's your message. You can control it. So I've I've added a text post. We have other kinds of posts. They're pretty self-explanatory. One that I like is the poll post. Facebook used to have this, but they took it out. Um, if you set up a poll, you can have multiple choice questions and say, "Hey, everyone, we're going to uh, we're going to bake a new cupcake. Which of these would you like? Chocolate pecan, chocolate raspberry, chocolate cranberry." And obviously, once you have followers and people click, you will see that you're, you're getting interaction. You're getting people involved in your social media. So the reason why you might want to do polls is to engage in a dialogue on social media as opposed to a monologue. What would you say a monologue is? What's the definition of a monologue? One person doing all the talking. All the talking. A dialogue, then, in contrast, is? two or more people doing a conversation. So you can use social media as a monologue in that you're posting stuff, you're putting stuff out to the world, and you're never replying. You're never following up to people's comments. You're never acknowledging people. You're just posting. But then what would work better is the opposite, the dialogue. You post something, maybe start a question, start something, someone posts, you reply to them, thank you for your comment. Maybe reply in, in, in deeper than that. Add, set up a post so that people interact. That's the dialogue. And in my recommendation, the way our company runs this, we al almost always engage in a dialogue. We post stuff that's open-ended. That's a question to try to get activity going on, not just, here's this, the end. Question, polls, um, activities. Yes? Is that essentially setting a chat room? No, um, the chat room is a bit more of a live in that everyone is chatting at the same time. So in a sense, it's similar, but it's different in that here you are the impetus of the conversation at all times. You're posting something, you're posting a question, you're posting a picture. As a chat room, anyone can post anything and then th therefore the conversation can stray. So if I put in white adults who chase cats, and you can search for white adult chase cat to bring that up, right? You could. Yeah, that's the purpose of all of this social media. 
to put stuff out there so that when someone searches, they could find you. So we could put a post, uh, a poll, we could put a picture and such, but we don't, I don't have any followers, therefore no one's paying attention. And this is again the chicken or the egg thing. Am I going to try to get followers first or am I going to post stuff? If I try to get followers first and I don't have my profile set up and I don't have any posts for people to see, I might not get as many followers. My recommendation is do three to five posts. Yes, to no one. Put three or five posts. Mix it up. Maybe a text, maybe a photo. Three to five posts so that you have something there. Because in a moment, I'll show you the most effective way to get followers on Google+. And you're not going to get followers if you have nothing to offer. So if we've got a few posts that are representative of what your company is about, what your profile is about, that'll entice people to, to, to move their mouse over to that follow button on your account and click follow. I'm looking at Destiny the Game, and I'm looking at posts and pictures. I'm getting excited. I want to know more about this. Follow. That's why you want followers, to have that captive audience. But if you don't have anything to show, I've just got the, hello, everyone. No one's going to really care. I'm trying to say coupons here. But what if I add a photo of one of my baked goods? What if I put in a photo of, this is Carrie the Koala, the Victor's Bakery mascot. I say, say hi to Carrie the Koala, the Victor's Bakery mascot. Sharing it to public and extended. You saw how quick that was. I clicked on photo, and then I chose a photo. You don't have any photos to share at the moment. That's why you might not be able to do it. But um, I would do three to five. Right, so maybe one text, maybe one photo, one link, one video, one poll. Events is more complicated. I wouldn't do that yet because that requires a lot of setup. But maybe you could do four photos. That's fine. Maybe four photos and one video. Maybe three texts and two polls. Whatever. Three to five posts. Yes, we're sharing it publicly. We're sharing it to no one. But when someone visits my profile in the way that I'm going to show you in a moment, then they see, oh, coupons. I like that koala. Oh, they've got that great how-to video. Let me follow. If they don't see content, they're not going to be enticed to follow. We saw Mashable had five million followers. There were probably a dozen things you saw on their Twitter that, that, said, that you said, that's useful. I like that. I'm going to try that. So this is how we address the chicken or the egg thing. We have a properly set up profile, as complete as possible. We have three to five posts. And then we'll start to get followers. Uh, we'll do one more thing here, and then I'll show you that, that trick. Um, just to show you here. I'm going to do another text post, but one of the things that I like about Google Plus that you don't have this on the other networks is the ability to format your text a little bit. So if I'm saying here, sale this Sunday, visit us on Main Street. I can, uh, I can do a little bit of text formatting here, not like choosing fonts and colors and such. But I can do a little bit of bolding, italicizing, and strike through. So if I want to make the word sale stand out, if you put asterisks around the words that you want to bold, you're not going to see the bold until you click share. But when you put the asterisk, which is the shift 8, the little asterisk symbol, if you put asterisks around a word or a whole sentence, after you click publish or post, it'll be bold. The usefulness about this is, as people follow you and then they see stuff, 
uh, and they scroll and scroll, this might stand out. This bold thing will stand out in a sea of regular text. You might want to do italicizing. Italics. Visit us on Main Street. Italics works with the underscore, which is shift dash. It's right next to the zero. Underscores. Put underscores around a word or a phrase or a sentence, and that, once you post it, will become italicized. And the third type is not useful, not that used. You have to see when you need to use it. But we've also got strike through. Strike through is a dash. Start the strike, dash, end the strike. Underscore start italics, underscore end italics. Asterisk start bold, asterisk end bold. Strike through, if I share that, Sale this Sunday. Notice how sale is bold. Main Street italicized. And strike through is a line across it. Again, strike through is not that useful, but if you need it, it's there. So I'm, I'm enticing people here. Space is limited. Maybe not. And you can mix that, mix and match that. I added a photo and I added text to the photo. I can add the bold and the italics here. What you're going to write or how you're going to write, it's going to depend on your target audience. That's going to segue into what I'm about to talk to right, talk about right now, target audience. Right now, I'm posting this public and extended, and I have no connection, so no one's seeing this. Here's one of the best things about Google+. It has an active community seed. An active community seed in that I can go to specific sort of chat rooms or bulletin boards of specific topics and interact with the people that care about what I care about. So if I'm trying to find like-minded people, if I'm trying to find foodies to follow my bakery, I have search on top here, and that searches all of Google+, Plus. but better is to go to where they're already hanging out. Let's go to where they're hanging out. Hover over the menu and go to Communities. This is one of my favorite things about Google+. Plus. It's very powerful. It's, and you'll see it's so obvious once I tell you about it, but hover over the menu and go to Communities. Here's a community of photography with 1.7 million members. A gaming community, 728,000. Eating right, 884,000. These are all people that have an account on Google+, and they've joined a community about a specific topic. So, don't do this yet, but if I were to join a particular community, I can post to that community, and I'm, in, an, in essence, targeting 1.7 million people. 1.7 million people could see my post. So I'm reaching this target audience that would care about my product, or brand, or company, or whatever. So you say, great, I'm going to join every community I see. No. These are moderated. People create these. People check the messages. People delete messages. People kick you out if you don't follow the rules. And each one has its own rules to read. So don't just click join yet. Question? Is that why when you're sorry, chat room, when you're checking chat rooms, every once in a while you'll see people throwing their ads up, come check out this, mm -hmm. and it's really not relevant to the topic, yeah. but they're trying to pull people out of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do something like that, but we're going to keep it relevant, as we'll, as we'll go on to see here. Yes? Is there any way to target a, a local geographic area in these communities? Unfortunately, no. Unless there is a community that is local. 
you can look up San Diego here and there might be a San Diego community. So you can't target that specifically yet, perhaps in the future. But um, let's say I'm this bakery and I want to join food communities. So I don't see any food communities here really, but we've got search. Ignore these for the moment. There's search. Not the big one at the top left, the little one on the top right. Search for communities. Type in a keyword about what your business is about. Mine is about, mine's Victor's Bakery, so I'm going to type in, I don't know, bakeries. Let's see what happens. Bakeries. Type it and press enter. Type, <coughs> type your keyword and press enter. So it says D'Angelo's Bakery in Argentina. La Vila Quinta Cakes Bakery, Goth Bakery, Ingress Resistance Bakery, etc. Okay, I get a lot of results, but 53 members, 5 posts. That's a dead community. 54 members, 3 posts. That's dead also. Bakery, 1,400 members, 803 posts. Okay, that one seems okay. It's got a good amount of people and a good amount of posts. And by good, I mean, I would recommend joining communities that have at least 1,000 members. The gene pool is going to be too small if you're trying to vie for attention in such a small place. So at least 1,000 members. But just because I see 1,000 members doesn't mean I'm going to click join right away. I'll show you another, another consideration. Yes? That's, that's exactly what I'm about to talk about right now. Yes. So, Yes, just because you have the number that I'm saying, my threshold, doesn't mean it's okay to still join. So, I'm not going to click join yet. Any community that you see here, you can preview it, and I highly recommend this. So, I'm going to check out this bakery community. I don't know if it's good or bad yet. Just because it's got 1,400, that's not good enough. Click on the little thumbnail picture of any community, and then you'll actually view it. You don't have to be a member to view it. So, I'm looking here. Bakery. You can post many pictures, cakes, chocolates, ice cream, and sweet. It's got 1,400 members. Here's who's in the community. It's got this that was posted at 1 in the morning today. This was posted on April 30th. This was posted on April 15th, April 8th. Hmm, that was posted a while ago. So just because I saw that number doesn't mean that's still a good community. I'm going to go into a community, see when stuff was posted and also see does the content have any interactions that one was posted today it has no plus ones it has one share and no comments hmm. let's scroll down this one was posted back on april 30th it barely has two plus ones this one was back on april 7th three plus ones for a, for one that has 1400 people people are not interacting i can kind of tell why that's not appetizing well, I guess enough people care. Four plus ones. Um, so uh, this is what you're going to do. Secondly, just because you find some that meet your threshold doesn't mean just join. I'm not going to join this one. There's no activity. February 22nd. There's no activity. People are posting stuff. No one's paying attention. I'm going to go back. I'm seeing I'm not getting too much very many good results from that keyword I searched. Bakeries didn't quite work. I'm going to search for other keywords. Yes? There's pictures in each one of those things. How is the decision made about what picture is there? The decision is made by you, the person that posts there, and also the moderators. If they decide a picture does not fit, they can remove it. You always have to read about a particular community. They'll have some, some about message. <coughs> Thanks for joining. We hope you like the various kinds of... Right there. Some of them are very specific and say, do not post commercial messages. Only post twice a day. Only post your own original photos. Always read the community. That's why you're also going to click through to view it, because you might have found the perfect community, and it says you may only post once a day. If you violate that, you'll be kicked out. So, who decides? The people, but then also the moderators. 
it's very complicated. You have to go back here to the Discover Communities and then click on Create Community. But um, I do not recommend you create your own communities because as we saw here a moment ago, this one's got 53 people. This one's got 54 people. On top of running your social media, now you've got to moderate a community and get people to come to it. I don't recommend making your own communities. Find communities, join them, create create community that way. I'm going to go back and just search for, uh, let me try this time, just food. Maybe if you're too specific, you won't get too many community results. Food. Food photography, the grilling guide, recipes. Obviously, my bakery would not be at home in the grilling guide community, but I could be in the food photography section. I could take great photos of these cupcakes and cookies and share them here. And it's got 196,000 members with 49,000 posts. Definitely within my threshold, but I still want to click through learning the art of food photography. Hmm. A photography community for all those obsessed with creating beautiful photos of food and learning about food photography. Share your work ask for a critique, ask questions, let's all help each other improve our food photography skills and share our love. Quick rules. Read the rules. Don't spam. No link littering. Post your own work only. Limit three per day. So this has some restrictions, but look at this. 47 plus ones, two shares, 16 comments. This great photo here, 23 plus ones. This one here, eight plus ones, two shares. Uh, 15 plus ones. So this is an active, vibrant community. Uh, people are commenting, sharing, uh, plus oneing. I would be, I would love to be a part of this. I could probably get into this one, even though it's about sort of like how to do food photography. I think I can stay within the boundaries, as in, I'm glad to put a photo of this cupcake that we sell, but I'm not going to post it obviously saying, buy this new cupcake. I'm going to post a photo of that super enticing cupcake and maybe write, we shot this with a Canon camera on daylight. I'm within the spirit of the community. People will see that amazing photo of ours. At the least, they will, they will plus one or share it or comment, and at the most, at the best, they will hover over my icon of my profile and click follow. So even if I'm not explicitly always posting a link back to my store, this is part of the getting followers and community building. I'm putting relevant posts to a community. Read the community. Can you put commercial stuff or not? And then I'm getting attention for myself. I'm getting fame for myself. The more you do this, the more potential followers you can get. So the big secret is about social media is be social. Post stuff on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, whatever. Specifically Google+, post join and post to communities. Because I cannot post to this community until I click join. Once I click join, I can share to that community and now I have a captive audience of 200,000. I can then share something. And this is also divided up, depends on the community. It's then divided into sections so that people that care about ingredients can view those posts. People that care about drinks, there. Sharing my work. We're on location. Here's an event. Introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm going to. I've joined this community, now I have the ability to post to it. Some communities say, request to join. So, they, so then some moderator will take the time to look at your profile and see what you're about and then maybe find you worthy to join or not. If not, there's plenty of other communities. But I'm going to post something here. Yes? I think that you picked Google Plus. I've never touched it for a reason. I'm just wondering what that is. Well, everything that we've been talking about. The main reason is the communities will be able to post content to a specific target audience. And it works. I could show you examples of all of our clients that if we post something as a regular post, we might get five results. 
but if we post to a community, we get 40 results. So I love Google Plus for businesses because we have these communities that we can post our content to within the boundaries of the community, and that gives us results. I can then pull up the statistics of a client that showed when we posted this on Google Plus, we got more traffic to the site. Now, obviously, more traffic does not exactly equal more sales, but more followers, more traffic, more hits, that eventually could lead to more sales. Yes? But and honestly, a lot of them say that you can't promote your own business within it, but is it still ill-advised to say things like my clients or as a professor, as a... Well, I think when they're saying promoting is to be specifically saying, you know, here's our product, buy it. Right. I think you should also check what other people are posting in that community because it is a kind of promotion to simply say, you know, hello everyone, here's our latest cupcake. Or obviously not so blatant, but the, fa the, the mere fact of posting to a community is a form of advertising and marketing which, which is okay. Uh, so in this particular one, I'm going to I'm going to post something, and on this particular community, we have a section we can post to. Always mind those also. Are you posting to the right category of the community? I'm going to post this on Introduce Yourself. So we're going to write here. I'm going to write, uh, we're an up and coming uh, bakery in Eastlake. We're so happy to join this community and share our tasty treats. Now, it's up to the moderators to decide if that goes above, if that goes out of their rules. You won't know until you actually do it or, or maybe see examples. But I'm posting to the right place, introductions. I'm not overtly saying, you know, please, please follow us, please buy from us, please subscribe to us. I'm just being cordial and doing an introduction posting it to the intro section. Now, potentially, 200,000 people have seen that. Potentially. How will I know if anyone really saw it or cared? At the top right corner of Google+, Plus, we have a little bell. Those are your notifications. If someone follows you, replies to you, plus one's your post, you'll get a little red number that appears there. That'll tell you this worked. It'll say, John Smith followed you. Or it'll say, Emily replied to you. Or it'll say, um, you know, San Diego City College uh, followed you. I don't have any notifications at the moment, because I really haven't been active. I've posted stuff, but no one saw it. Now I'm going to be active in communities. And I'm going to see that number increase because it is, it, it does work. Posting to communities. So this is what your task will be. If you, if you didn't get a chance to create the profile, the business profile, you want to create that. You then want to fill in your profile so that when someone looks at that, Hmm. The, the little icon there instead of my logo. So you want your you want yourself fully fully set up. Um, you want to add five posts just to your regular stream, so that when someone visits you, they will see your content. They'll see Carrie the koala. And you want to and you want to join at least three communities. You join a community in order to post to a community, a target audience. And it shows here that I've joined that one community. As you join more communities, it'll suggest you more relevant communities. Right now it's suggesting beauty and fashion and television. That's not relevant. Uh, Can you join a community? Yes. When you're, when you're viewing a community, it's kind of hidden, but when you're viewing a community in that little gear, that little sprocket, click that, <coughs> leave community. There's other nuances. I would look at the at the other options in that gear. But um, I'm gonna see about any other 
community. Cakes and baking. Well, first of all, it's got enough members. That's good. But then I'm gonna I'm gonna view it to see really what it's about. Share and discover the most delicious recipes imaginable. We'll be posting a range of treats and sweets ourselves, but we'd love to see your own ideas and suggestions. Please note, off-topic conversations, images, and comments may be moderated. If posting images that you have found elsewhere on the internet, please copy and paste the source link. Okay, this one sounds... I'm thinking, how can I use this? I'm gonna have this birthday cake that we sell. I'm gonna post a photo of it, an enticing photo, and then I might say, this, the secret of our birthday cake here is vanilla and nutmeg and whatever. So I'm within the spirit of the community in that it's baking, and I've got some recipe ingredients and such, and then it doesn't seem to say that I cannot put a link there, so then I'll put a link on the, on the post here also <coughs> saying, see the full recipe here, and that'll take them back to my website. So it's a preview that I'm posting here, and then the full thing over at my site. It's almost uh, lunchtime. <coughs> so that's the secret, communities. But still, you're going to need to put in your time and effort. You're going to need to find a, a relevant community, read the rules, post to it. People always come to these classes and they, and they learn this stuff, but then they hit a wall. They get writer's block. Because what more text can I post? What more pictures can I post? This is always a concern, and for our particular clients, we're always trying to create content. We're always taking a new photo. We're always writing something new because sharing the same one picture over and over is not going to be that effective. <coughs> so, we're going to wrap up the, the class in just a moment. Uh, as I said, this, there's no homework in these classes, but I'm going to give you homework. You need to log in and do this and try this from now until next week. You need to try it, make mistakes, ask questions, and, when you, and come with them next time. If you have questions, I'll answer them in class. If you've got a question, send me an email. I'll answer you through email. But you try this. This is not going to work automatically. You have to try it. That's why a social media marketer is a full-time job. It's one of the many services my company offers. And myself or other people in the company do this all week long on all the platforms. Because we've seen here, we've got half a million people that we could be reaching here and we could get a bunch of clients and followers on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Periscope and LO and etc 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 all the networks Yelp YouTube but it takes the effort it's the social in social media I saw a hand before you first yes okay when we finish question here can we tell anything about where those 464,000 people are no, unfortunately, Google Plus doesn't give you that sort of location information, but it shows you the people. So you could, you know, go specifically to people's accounts and interact with them. Plus one their post, reply to their post, and therefore they get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery replied to you. The point of that is that now this company or po profile is aware of my company, and then they may click follow. Any other general questions? All right, so today you've taken your first steps into Google+. Keep on that journey. <coughs>